Hi everyone, good morning. The NDSU School of Nursing as well as NDSU Extension have partnered together to offer training for critical techniques in the event of a major medical emergency. We have Angie Johnson and Dr. Carrie Nelson from NDSU who are here to teach and demonstrate and tell us everything we need to know, especially in rural areas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm so excited for this demonstration. I see we have some very legitimate equipment here. I, I'm a little nervous to kick things <laughs> off, but in terms of medical emergencies, we're talking about someone who finds themselves bleeding. So open wound, the blood is gushing, and this can be very serious. So to kick things off, what is Stop the Bleed? What's that program? And then walk us through that training. So Stop the Bleed is actually an international program that was brought to us as a result of the Afghanistan and Iraqi wars. Wow. We learned that during the war, um, if soldiers were equipped with simple tourniquets, mm -hmm. gauze to pack a wound, and the skills to actually apply these things, they could significantly improve survival rates among soldiers. Wow. So what we've done is we've brought this to the civilian side. They're wanting everyday people to know these skills and to be able to save a life. Okay, incredible. So are these training techniques best designed for someone in a rural setting? So, you know, an hour to the nearest hospital or something along those lines? Yeah, they really are. Okay. Just this last week, Angie and I chatted with a producer who said their EMS times or their ambulance times mm -hmm. are 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's 40 minutes just to get to you. They still need to get you to a hospital. Mm -hmm. And we know that most bleeding deaths, if they're severe enough, you can bleed to death in as little as five minutes. Wow, okay, so looking at those averages, and that's something we hear in this region too. Do we wanna kinda get into some of our demonstrations? Or Angie, did you wanna talk about the grant? How do we wanna do that? Yeah, absolutely. I can briefly touch on the grant sure. while Dr. Nelson shares how to properly use a tourniquet. Okay. Okay. So we partnered together with the NDSU School of Nursing yeah. and received a USDA grant for $350,000 to be able to go across rural North Dakota to as many counties as we can to offer personal stop the bleed training yeah. to farmers, ranchers, first responders, anyone within that community who wants to become, uh, to get certified and train and be able to access this equipment as our program provides free tourniquets, yeah. gauze and gloves to everyone of our participants through this grant. That's incredible. How valuable is that? Especially in dire times just like this. Okay, so do you want to kind of walk us through and tell us what's yeah. going on here? So basically what we want to do is if we come across somebody who has a bleeding injury, mm -hmm. we want to first make sure the scene is safe for us to actually help and okay. provide that intervention. So making sure that the scene is safe, um, ideally if we can call 911 mm -hmm. or tell somebody to call 911, we want to do that as soon as we're able. So when we come across the victim, we want to identify their injury. Um, depending on what type of injury it is, if it's happening on the trunk, we're ideally going to pack that injury, or mm. if it's some kind of puncture wound, we're going to pack that injury. Okay. Um, mm. If it's an injury that's occurring on the limb, we're going to want to apply a tourniquet. And ideally, that tourniquet will be two to three inches above the injury, so between the heart and the injury. Mm. So basically what we want to do is we'll, if this is our injury here, we're going to pull this Velcro as tight as we can. This is our tourniquet it's going to hurt. If they are not hurting when you're putting this on, it's not tight enough. Wow. So basically all we do is we pull that tight enough, we turn this little rod right here until the bleeding stops. Mm. And then we're going to hook it in here and we're gonna stay with our victim if we can. Okay, and so that was for a puncture wound. So that can, for a puncture wound, sometimes we'll want to pack it. Okay. Um, if that's not enough, sometimes we'll want to apply a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the type of the wound. Yeah, well, so I was like, what's the difference with this one? Is this a gash? What would we call So yeah, it? this is one that we would probably pack. Oh, so we would take okay. gauze, you keep packing that gauze sure. in until you meet okay. significant resistance. And then all you do is you put your hands over the top, like mm -hmm. you're doing CPR, and you hold pressure as tight as you can. Wow. So. Let's talk about how vital this training is, how it's offered, how do we sign up, how do we get involved? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got it set up and we've even brought our demonstration today that, mm -hmm. it, that shows some of the upcoming spring trainings we have across North Dakota. Mm -hmm. uh, if you log on to our NDSU Extension website, you can find all of our trainings that are listed and there's going to be more trainings to come because 
Our grant is for three years. We have enough money to be able to offer this training for just about a thousand individuals across North Dakota. So whether you live on a farm, mm -hmm. work on a farm, or just within your community, we want to prepare you and have these tools ready. Because what happens when you get hurt on a farm? Like Dr. Nelson said, it can be a long time to yeah. wait for help. Mm -hmm. And you can also be out in the middle of the middle of nowhere. You can be in the farmyard, but you can be in a field or a pasture. Yeah. So these kits are designed to be in the cab of your tractor, in your pickup, your combine. They're designed to be with you where you're going in your rural area. Okay, and then what exactly comes in each kit? Gloves, the tourniquet? Yeah, absolutely. So every every kit contains a tourniquet. Mm -hmm. It contains the gauze in order to pack a wound as well as gloves. Okay, and I think we have about a minute left if we want to try to walk it through again. So essentially it wouldn't come yeah. like this, right? No, it wouldn't come like that. So. We can take this off here again. <laughs> yep. And you can practice. Absolutely. So we know that this is a skill that anybody can learn. Okay. Got our tourniquet. So we got our tourniquet on. On the wound. We're going to wrap it up here. Okay. I'm I'm acting as if this is the this one I'm is working the one? on. This is the one? Okay, Perfect. go for so it. So I'm going about at this rate, right? Yep. yep. You want to make sure you're about two to three inches down. Okay. And then we're tightening it up as tight as you can. And going this way. Correct. Okay. And remember, it's going to hurt, so that victim will be in a lot of pain and expressing okay. that pain. And then we have the, we're going to twist this, right? Yes, you yep. twist that. So yes. clock or counter? Just when Either you're way. feeling resistance. Yep. Oh, okay. You yep. should feel some resistance oh, yeah, when definitely. you're turning it. Yep. Okay. And you can see that it's tightening around yeah, the arm yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So oh, gonna... oh, we went a little too tight yep. here. I'm going to open that up. You're going to lock there it. There we go. So that way the tourniquet. And on okay. this specific tourniquet, it's got a spot where it says time. You're going to want to take a marker or something to write with and write what time you applied that tourniquet okay. because the hospital needs to know that in order to understand sure. how long that tourniquet's been on the victim. Wow, how incredibly valuable. Tell us where we can find more information before we have to go. Yeah, log on to NDSU Extension and search for Stop the Bleed, and all of our trainings will be provided on our website. Wow. Thank you both so much for coming on, and thank you for what you do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, stick around. Plenty more coming up right here on North Dakota Today.